Race fans, start your engines for a non-stop thrill ride. Wow. Oh, it's the most high-octane countdown show ever. Bringing you the 10 most death-defying moments in NASCAR history. You won't believe what's happening. The car just disintegrates. Still got a little dirt in my teeth. From unbelievable escapes. He's alive? Incredible. To the big one. Eight times in the air. Bam, bam. Join him racing deals. From the king to the rookie. He has a flair for the dramatic. From flying engines to high-speed explosions. Oh, oh. All I see are pieces. From arcade-style escapes. It looks like a video game. That was a video game. To miraculous saves. His head beat on. Bloody in his eyes hurt a little bit. But only one can be number one. Holy cow! This is more than just a race to the finish line. I've never seen anything like that in my life. It's a journey through time. A little bit of a wreck. Buckle up and hang on. It's the 10 closest calls in NASCAR history. Number 10. Trouble off. Trouble for trouble. Newman slams the wall. Schrader and Newman is in the air and over. Ryan Newman, last year's Rookie of the Year, on the rear end, ripped from the car. For some reason, Ryan has this uh, thing about being upside down and flipping. That was a point in time where restrictor plate tracks were simply not good to Mr. Newman. If he doesn't have bad luck, he doesn't have any luck. Nothing but poor luck at Daytona and Talladega. When he started, first started his cup career, he had two or three of those incidents that uh, that I'm sure he would just as soon forget. It's always spectacular when cars get in the air. It's just coming off of three there, I know we were three wide, and um, I don't know if my car washed up or what, but I just I felt the car get light. To see him tumbling eight times in the air, I don't think I've ever seen a car come apart as much as his car came apart. After the first two or three flips, it should be over with, and then you just keep flipping and flipping and flipping. The car went one way, the rear end went another way. Wheel assemblies, springs. His car is flying into a million pieces. A lot of pieces not attached to that car anymore, the way I remember it. Still got a little dirt in my teeth. Um, and in your ears, but uh, yeah. you're, you're, you're good for the wear here. When you're out of that control, you feel helpless, and you just have to write it out. I'm just glad that I'm up in the television booth and not down there strapped in one of those stupid things. I just I remember thinking, I hope everything inside that car is where it's supposed to be. Daryl, this is a predicament trying to get unhooked out of that car upside down. The scariest part of the whole ride was the end of it, because I couldn't get out of the race car. Being stuck in a car, not knowing if it was going to burst into flames, catch on fire, if I had a fuel leak, or, you know, something was going to happen. It was, uh, it was pretty dramatic, but Ryan, being an open-wheel guy, he's kind of used to it. He popped right out. Number nine. There was probably only one word for that crash, and it was horrifying. It just sliced the car in two. That car just disintegrated. It was like time stood still. The initial impact was one of the worst ever. It seems like Bristol and that backstretch gate occasionally just reach out and bite drivers. Uh, when he impacted that crossover gate, you could see the car exploding. It looked like one of the cars had been tackled by the jaws of life and had done a very effective job of just breaking the car in two. Tore the entire right side of the car off, including the roll cage. And it wasn't just like the car hit the wall and rolled and bounced down the back straight away. I mean, it was like hit it, stop, boom. And you could see Harmon sitting inside the race car. When that car came back to rest with him facing traffic. And th that's one of the spookier moments I can ever remember at any racetrack. There was nothing between Mike Harmon and the oncoming traffic. And when Johnny Sauter hit him, Johnny ran into him, and it was like he went into the shell of the car. The engine was going down the backstretch. When that happened, I thought Mike was dead. I knew he was dead. High marks to Johnny Sauter because the last minute reaction that he had to try and jerk that car to the side saved Mike Harmon's life. Number eight. To see your brother barrel roll, you know, eight, ten times and a back straightaway at Talladega is not a comforting feeling whatsoever. Elliot got out of that thing okay, and we actually talked to him for a while afterwards about the wreck, and he said it was just the most surreal experience because once you get up in the air, all of a sudden, all this noise and all this energy just goes away. Asking Elliot afterwards, what was it like? He said, Jeff, you know how you play football and somebody hits you and you knock the breath out of it? I said, yeah, man. 
He said, can you imagine it happened three times to you? The way he described getting the air knocked out of him made me hurt. When I walked into the infield care center, when I saw him arguing with the nurse and the doctor in the care center about the fact that he did not want an IV because he was scared of needles, uh, I knew he was OK. Hear your words, father won 10 times. Oh, we got a car sideways in the trail. The Talladega, the funny thing about Elliott's second big wreck there was, A, the fact that he landed on all four wheels. And when does that ever happen in NASCAR? I saw a car get, you know, turned sideways and looked and upside down and flipping up in the air. And, and I was on the racetrack and I drove right underneath him. I saw all the M&M's characters and I saw him, you know, kind of looking down as I went under the whole time. <laughs> there is Elliott Sadler. He has a flair for the dramatic. Finished 20 seconds, probably a blessing. I really didn't want to do it on my roof, but that's probably y'all have some cool highlights now. But I want to tell my mom and dad and everybody at home, I am OK. It wasn't half as bad as last year. After that, his crew chief, Todd Parrott, thought it would be funny for the following race to put a little sticker on his dashboard. He said, keep four wheels on the ground. Number seven. Ken Kozlowski tried to win it. I don't know. I don't think he picks it up. Look at that. His head was going. Oh, no. He turns it. No. anything can happen. Guys are as desperate to win as they are, and they have such a playground in front of them. There's contact made, and they're along for the ride. Two guys going for the same piece of real estate. That had to probably be one of his most scary moments in a race car. What we saw suddenly was a car becoming airborne. Drove up, basically drove into Carl as he was starting his flip and um, contributed to a little bit more excitement than he wanted to. Cars and parts and pieces flying up in the stands. Flying into the catch fence. All I see are pieces and parts flying. Couldn't even tell what it was. I don't even know what car it is. Because all we could see was the bottom of it coming towards us. It looked like a video game. That was a video game move. Uh, I saw the ground, and then I hit the wall with I, I couldn't tell exactly which part of the car I hit the wall with. Everybody stops and holds their breath. You were worried about the fans. Fans got injured. Well, that's really uh, when you get worried. Even with that fence in between, you just never know what's going to happen. Unfortunately, it's tested out with hundreds of thousands of people in the stands. First thing you're worried about, is everybody OK in the grandstands and uh, on the racetrack? And fortunately, they were. The fence did exactly what it was supposed to do, and that's kept Carl's car onto the racetrack. Man, this is a high-speed game these guys play out here on the racetrack. We're just racing hard, and lucky nobody got hurt. The funniest thing about this, though, is just the way Carl Edwards reacts to this and still crosses the finish line on his feet. He did yes, to he a did. standing ovation from the crowd. Shades of Ricky Bobby. Coming up next, a miracle save. Yeah. Dale flipping Rusty and the biggest bang. Boom, boom. Oh, my God. It was amazing. Holy mackerel. That moment right there changed our sport forever. When the 10 closest calls return. Number six. Through the dry oval, Checkered is waving. Ernie Evans wins, and Rusty spins and gets airborne. And flips wildly right at the start finish line. And they're throwing the checkered flag, and you think the race is over. Uh, he had that attitude or that mental outlook that he was going to do whatever it took to win. You know, here we are coming to the start finish line, and uh, I see him and Dale Earnhardt right in front of me. Earnhardt actually. Uh, was the one that got into him. Earnhardt right up on the back bumper of Rusty, and he does catch him. Dale gets into Rusty, and uh, in those cars, the way they were reacted at that time, as soon as they got turned sideways, they caught air and lifted. That's and why around it goes. It was uh, certainly an interesting sight, seeing a car flying through the air while you were uh, going down the back stretch. Rusty barrel rolled, I don't know how many times. Pirouetting on its nose. Rusty takes off in there, and first thing I'm thinking about, you know, is I've made it across start, finish line, I'm OK. How is my brother? I, I saw that. We see his head moving around. Yes, we do. Earnhardt actually stopped by the car, and I remember him talking to the reporters. I, I went down and talked to Rusty. I got his gloves. I took his gloves off. Was, he was talking to me while they were getting him out of the car. And I just hope he ain't hurt seriously or nothing. You could tell in Dale's eyes that, you know, as, as intense as he was and being the intimidator, he was concerned. They have talked with Rusty, although he's just a little bit woozy right now. They say he appears to be conscious. He was complaining of being very, very sore. One of them racing deals, you know, I was trying to get under him, and he cut down, and I was, I'd already had my momentum up. Number five. Whoa, whoa, guys, whoa, whoa. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Michael McDowell brings by the double zero. Boom, boom. Everybody was focused on him. It was a qualifying run. 
Oh my God. I mean, it was like a bomb went off. Gets a little bit loose, corrects it, and goes right into the wall. You'd have to go a long way to find a car that crashed that bad and that hard and tumbled that much. Just waiting for either the car to come apart or to hit something. He hit the wall and just kept tumbling and tumbling and tumbling. It was literally ejecting parts out of that race car. When you're on the infield and you see a car that high, I know what I'm thinking. There's no way this guy is going to walk out of this car. There's no way this guy's gonna crawl out of this race car. The car comes to a stop, you know, I mean, it's silent on our broadcast. It was quiet. We were kind of speechless. And then to see him climb out of the car on his own power. Michael McDowell gets out of the car and just walks to the ambulance. Who would've thought that? When he got out of the car, it sounded like there were a million people there that day. Holy mackerel. It was amazing. I think he was as shocked as anybody that there, there wasn't a, a scratch on him. I'm just extremely thankful to be standing here and being able to race today. It was just kind of a, an overload for your mind to kind of wrap on. And now later, you know, he acted all macho. He was a little sore and shaken up. He became famous. We had to fly him off to New York. He ended up being on all the TV shows. Nobody had ever heard necessarily the name Michael McDowell, and he's doing, you know, Ellen or Letterman or these shows talking about, you know, walking away from that wreck. It was tremendous to, to be able to watch it. It was a single car wreck. All cameras were on him. We didn't miss a thing. Reminding us once again that this is a very dangerous way to make a living. Number four. It was Bobby Isaac, but there's been a crash on the home stretch. A car upside down. And on a new Petty. car, it is Richard Petty. That remains one of the worst crashes I think you ever see. It's one of those wrecks that you want to you want to go like that. He comes down to the inside of the track, slams into that concrete wall. He hit that inside guardrail so hard. This could be a very bad accident to one of the best known race drivers in the world. Richard came out of that corner and lost the car and hit the wall and it was airborne. And car flips, but he comes out of the car. Flipping three or four times with Richard hanging halfway out the window. There was no net in the window at that time. His arm ended up hanging out the window. His arm partly comes out. Hopefully that's all that's going to come out of the car. When that car landed there... You think he's dead. Now that's one you look at and you go, he's not going to walk away. But what is Richard's condition, could you tell? Yeah, he's, he's beat on bloody and his eyes hurt a little bit. He'll be all right, though. He's alive? It wasn't quite as as, as bad as uh, as it seemed. Some of the impacts that look like are nothing or big, and some of the impacts that look big are nothing. All he had was a broken collarbone. The impacts were so at such sharp angles and at such high speed. That was one of those accidents. That moment right there changed our sport forever. That's what led to the safety net. My grandmother made a window net for, for my father's car, uh, and a little bit later, then NASCAR started to mandate him. The 10 closest calls in NASCAR history. There's a little bit of uh, contact that goes along with the sport. Some of the impacts are, are big. Holy mackerel. Some of the impacts that look like are nothing are big. Because some of the impacts that look big are nothing. He's alive? Wow. Not meant to be totally clean racing. It's part of the sport. It's part of what we do. If you're not prepared to be in wrecks, you don't need to be doing this. Welcome back to the 10 closest calls in NASCAR history. This is number three. This bad crash over in turn two. Michael Waltrip has hit the wall hard. The car is upside down. Michael Waltrip crashes into the gate. Honestly, I thought an atomic bomb went off. It's like a thud. The car just literally disintegrated. Disintegrated. And you felt it in the ground. And then it just exploded. Every parts. Everything just went up in the air. I mean, I just froze. I, I never seen anything like that in my life. It was the ultimate unsurvivable crash. It just hit that end of that wall and it stopped. At probably 110, 20 miles an hour. The car totally destroyed in front of our eyes. It looked like a soda pop can or a beer can that had been run over by a Mack truck. You couldn't even tell which was the front of the car, which was the rear of the car. They ripped the car just in pieces. Just pieces of sheet metal piled up on top of the driver. I was positive there was absolutely no way that Michael Waltrip was still alive inside that wreckage. That's the moment that your stomach turns and you just keep wondering. You bowed your head and just prayed to the good Lord that he would be OK. I really believe that you could have heard a pin drop. I remember seeing Daryl run across pit road, almost jump the back stretch wall. I never will forget my brother looking down, and he's crying. He's like, are you OK? Are you OK, buddy? He looked up at me and winked, so. He's a Walter. He, he's got a pretty hard head. He's <laughs> like, Mikey's okay. I was dazed because my feet were on the pavement, 
and that didn't seem like a problem to me. I mean, he didn't have any idea. He thought he was going to crank up and go. Michael stands up, and the sheet metal's falling off, fall around. He's like, no, no, what's wrong? He got some contusions and a little bit of confusion, but uh, that's probably not too unusual. It was a crazy crash, and, and a day that I can look back with you know, look back on and smile. Well, you need to rest up because, baby, let me tell you, you ain't going to believe the pictures you're going to see when you see them. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, hope uh, we did a good job for Kool-Aid anyway. That's our first thing. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Bad trouble, bad trouble. Okay, a terrible crash. Richard Petty's car has turned over seven or eight times coming off turn four. I've never witnessed anything like that. This car just takes off. I mean, that car, when it hit that wall, it just it sheared it the front and off of it. I know Richard started turning, I tagged him in the back, and it started, it started a situation you know, where he got in the wall. It's the worst accident I've ever seen Petty have. It just starts flipping. It was flipping. Parts and pieces are flying all over the racetrack, and it was it was against the wall, and it was going across the wall. It just it sheared it the front and off of it, and you can just see the chain link fence just bouncing as he's bouncing the car off the fence down the front straight of it. Getting hit after that. He got hit a couple more times. I mean, Richard come off the wall, and I just I couldn't control the car to run into him. When he got hit, you just held your breath and you waited. That's what worries me, is that second that crash. crash. That was a scary moment. Chris Economaki was one of the announcers, and I'll never forget that he said on the air, This crash will undoubtedly end the career of Richard Petty. Richard Petty's career is over. This cannot be the end for Richard Petty. I know this looks bad, but we've seen him come through some other crashes that looked a little bit like this. He cheated death one more time. But then as they kept showing the replay, you had to think, yeah, this is this is pretty bad. And of course, you know, that skinny figure climbs out of the car, kind of waves the crowd as he always did. Yeah, the king was certainly injured, but there was nothing life-threatening about his injury. Richard said, you know, as long as he was still having fun, he was going to keep racing. Does your cousin still need to be out there driving these things? No, I mean, it's up to him. He says he enjoys it, but I'm sure he didn't enjoy that ride. Linda got to the infield care center. Linda looked down and said, are we still having fun? Uh, it was those moments late in Richard's career. Unfortunately, too many of those happened. And it just stands as one of those unbelievable things that you watch and you wonder how he could walk away from it, but he did. Coming up next, the closest call in NASCAR history. Pirouettes through the air. Flipping, flopping. It, it looked horrific. Yeah, it was crash and bang and hang on. That fence could have given way. Critical moment for NASCAR. When the 10 closest calls in NASCAR history return. Welcome back to the 10. We've brought you nine unbelievably close calls so far. A lot of pieces not attached to that car anymore. I hope everything inside that car is where it's supposed to be car just disintegrated. The engine was going down the backstretch. The way he described getting the air knocked out of him made me hurt. What we saw suddenly was a car becoming airborne. It looked like a video game. That was a video game move. Dale gets into Rusty and uh... Rusty barrel rolled I don't know how many times. Just kept tumbling and tumbling. Holy that It was amazing. But he was a little sore and shaken up. Car flips, but he comes out of the car. There was no net in the window at that time. His arm ended up hanging out the window. He just hit that end of that wall and stopped. That's probably 110, 20 miles an hour. This car just takes off. When he got hit, you just held your breath and you waited. But now it's time for the closest call of them all. This is number one. Every now and then, there is a wreck that makes everybody just stop in their tracks. One of the real oh, we Bobby have a problem. Blown the tire. Bobby Allison with a horrible crash here on the front stretch. It has torn out a complete section of protective railing. In 87, we didn't have roof flaps yet. All 42 or 43 cars had qualified 200 miles an hour. We didn't have any safety devices that actually kept the cars on the ground. My engine blew up. And a big piece of my engine went under the car. That car exploded. The wind got the car and lifted it up. We have a problem. It's blowing the tire. A hush came over the entire sport. There was this horror in your mind of what could happen. From there on, you know, it was crash and bang and hang on. The tire. And pirouettes through the air. Flipping it, flopping it, chopping down the fence along the front stretch of Talladega. Well, I knew I hit the fence, and uh, yeah, I recall that quite well. The car just took off and went up in the grandstand. It looked horrific. All I saw was a big 
cloud of dust and smoke on the front straightaway. Pieces of fence, pieces of car go flying, and you knew some of that was going to go up in the grandstands. He did get in the grandstands. And he may even get down and get the flag. Harold Kinder never misses a beat. He grabbed that caution flag, and he was waving that caution flag. And the car's just flying up underneath him. Suddenly, the whole meaning behind the race goes away. Bobby Allison is moving around in the race car, and that is certainly good news for us, but he has to be quite shaken after a tremendous crash. First thing I'm thinking about is, is Bobby okay? And then I realized, oh no, you know, everything's flying in the grandstands. Everybody in the grandstand uh, seemed to be okay from my vantage point, but I'm not really sure. That. that was one of the scariest moments I had witnessed in racing. At any second, that fence could have given way. Had the catch fence not worked the way it ultimately worked, you shudder to think about what would have happened. There were people in the sport, in the garage, that said that could have ended NASCAR as we know it. Fortunately, the fence held up, the car comes back down on the track. I'm okay. Uh, very thankful to the good Lord that I'm not hurt, and I hope nobody else down there is hurt too bad. That was a very, very close, critical moment for NASCAR right there. That was the moment that brought the restrictor plate. The restrictor plate has changed our sport and has given us some of the most exciting racing that we've seen over the years. Bad trouble, bad trouble. Okay, a terrible crash. Newman slams the wall. Uh oh, oh, trouble. Elliot Sadler over once and a half and on his roof. Oh, we have a problem. 